Welcome and welcome to our last lecture of the season and the series here. It is chapter 15 up today. It's going to be a two part lecture and we're going to talk about acids and bases. In the first part of this lecture, we'll talk about acids, bases, calculating pH, pOH, H plus and OH minus concentration. All right, let us get started. Chapter 15 acids and bases. All right, everybody, it is chapter 15 time. It is acids and bases. Dare I say the last one here of the season. So let's see what we can do to finish out it here with acids and bases. So let's talk a little bit about what acids are and sort of an early definition of an acid uh, was one that was brought to us by Arenas. Uh, he said an acid is a solution that contains an excess amount of H plus ions in solution. So a couple of things about acid base chemistry that's really important is a couple of symbols or formulas that are sort of used interchangeable. So H plus, which is the hydrogen ion, also sometimes referred to in acid base chemistry as a proton. And that is because as you might remember, a hydrogen has one proton. It's got one electron, it's got no neutrons. Uh, so in order for it to become positively charged, it has to lose its electron. Thus, it only has a proton left. So very commonly in acid-based chemistry and later on in this chapter ourselves, uh, we'll refer to it as a proton. Um, in addition, we will also see another formula, which is H3O plus, and that is what is known as the hydronium ion. And the hydronium ion is pretty much the same thing in acid-based chemistry as the H plus ion. And what I mean by that is you will see, as probably go through this chapter and we talk, uh, you will see H plus used a lot. You'll see H3O plus used a lot, and they are sort of interchangeable. Uh, they sort of represent, if you want to think about it, the acid part of the solution. And uh, they are used interchangeable both in chemical reactions. Uh, they're also used sort of interchangeable in formulas as well. I will be honest with you, most of the time for me, just the way I was learned or just taught, I guess is the better way to say that. Uh, I use H plus most of the time. A lot of books and stuff will use H3O plus. So almost anywhere, perhaps I write H plus, you could pretty reasonably uh, separate it out or switch it out for H3O plus. So they're sort of used interchangeable. They're basically the acid part of the solution. And by the way, when we talk about H plus in the solution, it really means free H plus floating around in the aqueous solution floating around as ions. And as we'll talk about the amount of H plus that you have free in that solution really will determine whether or not it's sort of solutions acidic or basic we'll talk about as well. Uh, but really a lot more H plus is gonna be probably an acidic solution. So when we talk about the ability of something to be an acid, it's the ability of something to produce this. So to produce these H pluses that end up freely floating around in the solution um some common properties of acids uh they have sour taste you probably should never really uh, taste them uh they turn uh litmus paper pink uh it's okay it tastes like acetic acid like vinegar and stuff like that that's okay i suppose uh litmus paper uh typically will turn pink or sometimes referred to as turning red uh and typically if you have like say blue litmus paper and it is pretty much what it sounds like it's a little piece of paper that starts blue and usually if you put something on that piece of paper and it turns from blue to red, then that means that you typically will have an acidic solution. They also react with metals to produce hydrogen gas and they also react with carbonates to produce uh, carbon dioxide. And a couple of reactions that we actually uh, saw earlier on when we were talking about reactions. So for example, uh, if you took some zinc metal and you react it with hydro, hydrochloric acid, I'll spit that out, I suppose. Uh, the hydrogen is going to come in here and kick out the, sorry, zinc's going to come in here and kick out the hydrogen. 
uh, which has a plus one charge and a minus one charge. The result of that is the hydrogen gas will come out and you will see bubbles. The zinc will then gain a plus two charge and hook up with the chlorine and make some zinc chloride a little balancing action here. And uh, this type of reaction, as you hopefully remember, is a single replacement reaction. Now, acids also can sometimes come together with bases and produce something, for example, like carbonic acid that's here. Carbonic acid will completely decompose into water and CO2 gas, and that's what it's talking about, uh, through a decomposition reaction. A reminder, you know, we talked about it when we did nomenclature, uh, how we name acids, just a quick review of that since we are especially talking about acids and bases in this chapter. Remember that when we go to name acids, it all involves oxygen. And if there is no oxygen, the acid will start with hydro something ic acid, like HCl. There is no oxygen in that one so that would be hydrochloric acid remember that always for an acid the cation is h plus so always that is the positive ion when we talk about an acid and obviously in this case the anion would be cl minus is that cl minus that kind of are the anion parts that takes the kind of missing part here when we name it Remember as well that if it is, yes, it does contain oxygen, uh, then it'll probably have one of those polyatomic ions in it. And again, as we talked about, polyatomic ions ends in eight or eight in most cases. And that means that if your polyatomic ion ends in eight, your acid would be something ic acid like HNO3. Uh, and that NO3 is nitrate, which means this would be nitric acid, right? Also here, cation, like any other acid, H+, plus, anion in this case is our nitrate, minus one. And lastly, it's a quick review of nomenclature of acids. Uh, if it ends in ITE, your polyatomic ion, your acid will start with something and then have OUS acid at the end of it uh, again here if we took something like hno2 no2 is no2 minus which is nitrite ite this would be nitrous acid once again here cation h plus uh, anion in this case nitrite no2 minus remember that if it does contain oxygen we do not use hydro so no hydro on this side of the Naming hydro only for our acids there that, again, uh, do not contain oxygen. All right, so that was just a quick review, uh, throwback slide, if you will, to what we talked about previously. Now, bases, on the other hand, bases are solutions to contain an excess amount of hydroxide. Uh, so much like an acidic solution, something that is a base has the ability to produce free OH minus in solution. So free amount of hydroxide floating around in that solution is a base. Um, not all bases will have hydroxide in the formula, but some can actually produce hydroxide. They have some different characteristics, uh, some common characteristics of, and this should definitely say bases, not acids. Uh, bases are, they have a bitter taste. Uh, a lot of uh, soaps, drain cleaner, that type of stuff is bases. They also turn litmus paper blue. So a lot of times if you're using litmus paper and you're trying to test something that's basic, you'll actually start with a uh, red piece of litmus paper. And if you put your solution on the paper, it will turn your red piece of litmus paper blue, basically. Kind of like what we see here in the picture, kind of this color right there. And again, that tells you that it is a basic solution. Uh, slippery, uh, soapy type texture. If you ever get base on your hands, uh, 
I don't recommend it unless it is so. Uh, but it does feel like almost you have a layer on top of your hands and stuff like that. It neutralizes acids through the acid-base neutralization reaction that we talked about previously. So acids were first recognized by their characteristics of that sour taste. And there are some acids, obviously, that we're familiar with that we actually do eat. Uh, vinegar, for example, the major component of vinegar is acetic acid. Uh, lemons have citric acid. Bases are also characterized by that bitter taste and slippery feel. Uh, again, as I mentioned, a lot of drain cleaning and soaps are bases. Bases are sometimes referred to as alkalis uh, and also the word alkaline pretty much means basic. And if you think about throwback to our periodic table as well, group one, for example, group two, group one is the alkali metals. Group two there is the alkaline earth metals. So once again, alkaline means basic. And if you look on group one and group two of the periodic table, a lot of these guys there in group one and group two that have hydroxide in their formula, like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, etc., cetera, uh, they're bases. And there are actually a lot of strong bases come from group one and group two on the periodic table. So group one and group two on the periodic table, uh, those guys that have hydroxide in their formulas are typically bases in where they come from. Now, the reaction of acid and base is, as we talked about when we talked about reactions, uh, is a acid plus a base will really make two things. It will make a salt and water. And a salt is really just an ionic compound. And typically, if it's a strong acid, strong base combination, the water is made up from the H plus from the acid and the OH minus from the base. So those two things basically will come together to make water. This is ultimately, as we talked about, a double displacement reaction. So if we took something like HCl and KOH, why don't you take a moment and write the products and balance this equation and why don't you also do it for this one, a little H2SO4. And let's do, um, uh, we'll do sodium hydroxide here. All right, so for each of these, write the salt and the water that you get on this side. So obviously that's half of it done there for you. And write it and balance the equation here. So take a moment and do that. Okay, uh, so once again, this really is a double displacement reaction. We've got positive, negative, positive, negative. Once again, we're going to switch partners. And when we put this together, we want to put it together correctly. Uh, so we basically have H plus and OH minus. So whenever you have H plus and OH minus, uh, that is where the water comes from. So once again, the water really comes from the H from the acid, the OH from the base, and that is basically where we get that water that comes from. Now, the other guy that's formed there is going to be a result of putting the other two things together, and we will go with uh, our K, which is really K plus, and Cl, which is Cl minus. So when we put that together, we end up with KCl. Solubility rules tells us it's aqueous. This over here is our acid, hydrochloric acid. This is our base, potassium hydroxide. This is our water, and this is our salt. Again, the salt is just an ionic compound. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Same deal, really. This is a positive, negative, positive, negative here. This is our acid. This is our base. Now, once again, we want to think about what is the basic components here. And that is H plus and sulfate, which is SO4 two minus. What is the basic components of this guy? 
sodium ion and hydroxide. This again is also a double displacement reaction. So once again, our water, as I mentioned before, will always come from the H and the OH. So that's uh, this guy and this guy coming together. So that again is gonna give me my water that I'll have over here on the product side. And if we put that in there, that's our H2O. Now we're going to put these guys together. And once again, it's really important that you put it together properly. That is sodium that has a plus one charge. That is sulfate that has a minus two charge. The proper formula is Na2SO4, also soluble based on solubility rules. Remember that you want to, as we talked about a number of times earlier on in some of these chapters, you want to make sure that you get the correct formula down first, and now you can go back and balance it. So it is not balanced. So you should not have anything like Na2SO42 or anything you know weird like that. Uh, to balance it here, we're gonna put a two there in front of that. And I think we will also need a two right about there. And now we should have a balance. Once again, this is gonna be our water and our salt. That is form. So you essentially can, if you're not sure, you know, what the salt you're going to get, but you know it's an acid and base, especially sort of strong acids, strong bases. Uh, you could just literally, and I can't do it here on the screen, put my hand over the H. So I'll just cross it out here. Just put my hand over the H from the acid, put my hand over the OH from the base. And again, what is left over is what's going to come together and you would put it together like a normal ionic compound like we talked about with nomenclature and that will give you your salt so same idea up here kind of put my hand over the h from the acid put my hand over the oh from the base and i'm just going to put these guys together once again to get to my salt so you do need to be able to obviously know how to write these things figure out what the salt is uh, we won't talk about it in this class, but in uh, a couple classes, maybe from now, uh, if you continue on through chemistry, you'll talk about the uh, reaction that salts can sometimes do. So sometimes in these acid-base type situations, when you have a salt involved, uh, that salt actually can continue to react and can actually affect the pH of the solution, like we're going to talk about here today, but we won't talk about the reaction of salts sometimes referred to as a hydrolysis sort of a reaction. So as I mentioned before, uh, Arrhenius did a lot of work with electrolytes and we kind of uh, jumped that part of this chapter, which by the way is in this chapter. We jumped it in an earlier chapter and did it. Uh, but remember that there are strong electrolytes uh, which 100% break apart in solution and basically produce a lot of ions, right? because of that they conduct electricity really well because there's a lot of ions floating around in solution there's also weak electrolytes right uh, which mainly stay together but does produce some ions so there are some positive and negative ions in the solution. And it's able to conduct electricity a little bit because of that. Uh, remember that when we're dealing with net ionic equations, for example, um, we keep together anything that's a weak electrolyte and anything that's a strong electrolyte, we completely break apart. So speaking of, again, just a, a reminder of, we also talked about that from this chapter as well, writing net ionic equations. So we'll just go to our acid-base reaction we just wrote on the previous page there, our HCl plus our KOH, uh, giving us our water and our uh, KCl. I think that was the one we did, I hope. If not, we'll pretend that's the one we did. All right, so because hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, it will 100% break apart. Potassium hydroxide also is strong base, it will 100% break apart. So when we look at our molecular equation, which is what I just wrote, uh, we could also do our total ionic equation, which would be H plus plus Cl minus, again, breaking that strong electrolyte apart, our K plus, 
and our OH minus, breaking our other strong electrolyte apart. Remember that in addition to weak electrolytes to stay together, anything that's a solid liquid or a gas typically will stay together. So here the water will stay together and we will break apart our other electrolyte here, which is our potassium chloride. This is again, what is referred to as we talked about the total ionic equation. And remember, it is that total ionic equation that you're able to find ions on both sides of the equation to look the same. Uh, and in this case, it is Cl minus on both sides and K plus on both sides. And those are our spectator ions, as we talked about, right? So these are our spectator ions. And if we cancel out our spectator ions like we normally do, we are left with what always happens, as we talked about in that reaction chapter. When you take a strong acid and strong base together, ultimately the overall reaction is the formation here of water, right? So it's the formation of water. That's our net ionic equation, right? That we've done before. Why is that important? Well, as we also talked about in that chapter with reactions, that is one of the like three main reasons why a reaction takes place is that formation of water. So when we react an acid and base together, we're basically doing one of the three reasons why a reaction takes place, which is that formation of water. So when we get back to Arrhenius here, his definition again of an acid is something that has the ability to produce H plus ions in solution, while a base is something that has the ability to produce OH minus ions in solution. So for example, hydrochloric acid, when it's in water, will 100% break apart into H plus and Cl minus. And what you have basically is 100% those ions floating around in solution. So if you were to look at a beaker, uh, you basically would have nothing but these ions floating around. You would not have any more HCl units together. And because it will produce all these free H pluses, it's a strong acid. By the way, just to kind of show you the definition, we were talking about H3O plus earlier. This is a chemical reaction that basically demonstrates the hydrochloric acid dissolving in water, basically breaking apart in water. You could, if you wanted to, write this same reaction and actually include the water in the reaction. And if you include the water in the reaction, uh, you will get really our positive negative, positive negative. So we're going to get our H3O plus as this H will come over here and you will get your Cl minus in this case. And if you do include the water in the reaction, which is perfectly fine to do, uh, you actually will produce H3O plus. If you leave it out, which actually in this case is perfectly fine to do as well, uh, you will get just the H plus. So you will sometimes see maybe the beaker drawn like this uh, with H3O plus floating around in that solution. And once again, that is the same thing as those H pluses as well. Now, when we talk about bases, the ability to produce hydroxide, something like KOH is a strong base. Uh, which means once again, it will 100% when it goes for a swim in solution, break apart into K plus and OH minus. And again, if you looked at like a beaker that had that in it, you would have K plus and some OH minuses. And once again, it's the presence of those OH minuses, uh, which makes it a base. Now, not all bases will actually have hydroxide in the actual formula but there are some bases that can produce hydroxide. So a common example of that, I'm just gonna kind of clear up a little bit of room here so I can kind of write, maybe we'll get rid of that there as well. All right. So for example, if you took something like ammonia, which is NH3, that is actually a weak base and it can react with water and the result of that is we will end up with NH4 plus OH minus. 
clean it up a little bit more there. Get rid of some of that there. And once again here, it is a weak base because we have that reversible reaction, right? It's basically a weak electrolyte. Um, and it's able to produce OH minus in solution. So it meets the criteria of a base and it's something that does not have um, hydroxide in its formula. It has to go find some water, do a little reaction to produce that hydroxide. And that's why it's actually a weaker base than say this KOH, which is a strong base because frankly, the KOH is carrying its OH with it. So all it has to do actually is go for a swim and it will produce that hydroxide relatively easily by breaking apart. Uh, again, the NH3 has got to go find some water, do a little bit of a reaction to produce the hydroxide, but they're both considered bases. But once again, potassium hydroxide, much stronger base. All it's got to do, like I said, is kind of go for a swim and it'll produce hydroxide. The ammonia has got to do a little bit of work, if you will, to produce that hydroxide. So, the Arrhenius definition was really a good sort of step forward in terms of acid-base chemistry. It was limited because it only dealt with one type of base. He did a lot with just hydroxides. Um, but as I just drew there, or just wrote out in that formula, there are definitely bases like ammonia, or things that look like ammonia, by the way, um, that are weak bases. And once again, they do not have hydroxide in it, like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. But as we just saw there, with a reaction with water, it could actually produce hydroxide, which still meets the definition of being a base. So a more general definition of acid and bases, and the one most people think about when they're dealing with acid and bases is the Bronsted-Lowry definition. And the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid and base is an acid is a proton donor. So our acid will donate a proton and our base will accept a proton. And a proton, again, as I mentioned before, is because H plus has lost an electron, has no neutron. So the only thing left there at that point is a proton. So that's why it's referred to it. It's also really important to remember when we talk about these things that it is H plus, which means you do have to take into account the plus charge there. It will affect the overall charge of things. So. Have we seen this? We actually did in two ways that I just wrote earlier. Remember, I wrote this reaction where we have hydrochloric acid and it can actually react with water here or dissolve in water and it will produce H3O plus and RCl minus, right? And in this case, this is going to be our acid because what's going to happen here is it's going to send over to the water, the H plus. And that means water in this case is going to act as the base is going to accept it. We also saw that in the ammonia reaction that I wrote, which was our NH3 plus our water. A little, and I'll write it separate. You can actually write it together as ammonium hydroxide, but I will write them as separate things here. And once again, this is actually gonna be our base. This is gonna be our acid, and it's gonna be the water sending over the H plus over here. The sort of consequence of Bronsted-Lowry definition of acid and bases is it will actually create some partners on the other side of the arrow to our acid and bases. So for example, over here, the uh, HCl is the acid. Its partner on the other side is the guy that has CL in it. And this is known as the conjugate base. While our water is the base on the left-hand side, its partner on the right-hand side is known as the conjugate acid. So these two things are related to each other and these two things are related to each other. Same thing over here, our NH4 plus is the conjugate acid. OH minus is the conjugate base. And that means that the NH3 and the NH4 there, our NH4 plus is related 
and these two guys are related. How are these guys related? Also a really important relationship, which is just by that one H plus. That has to be the only difference between those two things. So when we look at HCl to Cl minus, it has one less H plus on the right-hand side. When we look from H2O to H3O plus, it has one more H plus. This is the H plus that was changed and sort of transferred. Same thing here, NH3 to NH4 plus has one more H plus as they gain the H plus, as we see here. And the water to the OH minus has one less H plus. So in order for something to be what is referred to as conjugate acid-based pairs, the absolute only difference that there can be is one H plus difference. It cannot be anything more than one H plus difference. So as I mentioned, it creates these partners. And here's just generically, sometimes HA is used as a generic formula for an acid and sometimes referred to as monoprotic acid. Monoprotic because mono means one, protic means proton. It has one hydrogen to give. There's also like diprotic acids that sometimes have this formula. And again, this is more of a generic formula for an acid. And uh, again, it has the H plus. The difference here is actually the charge on the negative guy. Uh, this is plus one. This is actually minus one. That's plus one. There's two of them, which means this guy has actually a minus two charge. If you were going to think about it. There's also H3O, H3A. And that is what is referred to as a triprotic acid. It's got basically three hydrogens to give away plus one here. And this guy has a minus three charge. Real life examples of each of these. HCl, hydrochloric acid. Monoprotic, one comes off. Sulfuric acid, diprotic, two come off. And phosphoric acid, H3PO4. All three of them come off. So we'll talk maybe a little bit about it, but by the way, where we got here and here where there are multiple hydrogens that can come off, they actually do come off one at a time. They all don't just kind of drop off. So for example, something like sulfuric acid, uh, the first thing that would happen is it would lose one hydrogen and make this. Then this guy here would lose the next hydrogen. And so forth. So it actually does come off one at a time. So here's a question. Do you think it's easier to remove the first hydrogen or the second hydrogen? What do you think which one is easier to remove? Well, hopefully you are saying to the screen, it is the first hydrogen is easy to remove. Second one's hard because you now have something that has a negative charge. You're trying to remove something with a positive charge. Gets much, much harder to remove. By the way, down here, it gets even harder to remove when you get to like the third hydrogen you want to try to pull off. So that brings up, as I mentioned, these conjugate acid-base pairs. And it's sort of a result of our bronsted lowry definition. And looks like that arrow missed it. So coming down here. Um, and obviously uh, these two guys are related to each other. Sorry, kind of moved a little bit there. The lines. All right. So uh, HCl, Cl minus related to each other. H2O and H3O plus related to each other. And here's just that picture of what's going on uh, again. In this case, uh, we got our HCl acting as our acid. This water going to act as our base. Going to once again create our conjugate acid and our conjugate base. Once again, that H3O plus is known as the hydronium ion. And as we mentioned before, basically equivalent to H plus. All right, so we got a few up here or four. Take a moment and decide which one of these four. There might be more than one. 
is a conjugate acid base pair. So take a moment and see what you come up with. Okay, let's take a look. So what are we looking for in terms of are these things pairs? It is again, a difference of only one H plus. So that is it. That is the only difference we could have. So let's take a look at the first one. We got a little HClO4, a little perchloric acid, a little ClO4 minus, which is perchlorate. To me, that looks like a difference of only one H plus. And if you put the H plus on the guy on the right, you get the guy on the left. Or if you take the H plus off, you get the guy on the right. That also shows you here, once again, when I take the H off on the left and it's neutral, when I lose one positive, I become one more negative. So again, it's really important that sign or charge changes since that's very commonly missed by people. So that looks like a winner. Let's take a look at number two, HCl, ClO minus. Well, it is a difference of one H plus, but it's also a difference of there's no oxygen on that guy and there's an oxygen on that guy. That means not a pair. So it can only be an H plus difference. So you got anything more than that, then it's not a pair. Look at number three there. We got H2PO4 minus HPO4 two minus. So once again, uh, the difference here is one H plus. And if you can't see it, once again, if you take the guy on the left and you remove an H plus, that would get rid of one of these H's. And again, we become one more negative, which means we are at negative one to start with. We would then become negative two. And now we are exactly the same on both sides because we removed that H plus. So it is a pair. Lastly, HNO3, NO3 minus. Once again, the difference here is one H plus. Again, if we remove the H and we remove the plus, that means we're neutral. When we remove the positive, we become one more negative. Now we got a matching pair right there. Uh, that would tell us that it is. So it looks like not bad here. Uh, one, three, and four. Uh, all our acid conjugate base pairs. All right. So why don't you try this one and see what you come up with here. I want you to write the conjugate base for each of the following. So take a moment, write the conjugate base for each of the following and see what you come up with here. Okay. So let's talk about how you might want to approach this. Well, remembering the relationship that we talked about earlier, uh, what happens when we take an acid and a base in sort of the Bronsted Lowry definition is we have acid and bases and they go to conjugate acids and conjugate bases. And by the way, that is sort of the way it should be set up. When you look at a reaction, you're kind of regular acid and bases always on the left-hand side of the arrow, your conjugate partners kind of always on the right-hand side of the arrow. So the relationship is if it's an acid on this side, its partner on the other side is the conjugate base. And if it's a base on the left-hand side, it is the conjugate acid partner on the other side. So in this particular case, if you're not sure what you should do, one of the first things you should know that you should do is uh, it involves an H plus. So a lot of times people know, well, I gotta do something with an H plus. But it's the second part that runs into trouble for people, which is you got to put it on or you got to take it off. And sometimes people are not sure which way you should do it. So a really easy way to sort of figure out what you should do is if you understand this relationship I just wrote up there on the screen on the top right. And you also understand the Bronsted Lowry definition of an acid and a base. You can pretty much figure it out pretty simply. So let's try, try that approach just to make sure we're going to look at, and we want to write the conjugate base. So we basically want to write this guy. So, all right. Well, if I just follow my arrow back, that means that what I am starting with in this case, these are all going to be here acids which makes what I need to do next pretty easily because now all I have to do is remember what the Bronsted-Lowry definition of an acid is. And that is something that will 
donate an H plus. So it will donate an H plus. So now I know I just have to take off the H plus. So we'll start here. Taking off the H plus means we get rid of one H that still leaves us an H and an S. Once again, it was neutral to begin with. So we are losing a positive. So we should become one more negative. So that would be our conjugate base in this case. Next, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to lose the H, which leaves us just an S. Once again, it is a positive. So we are going to become one more negative. We already have a minus one. So one more negative would be minus two. Once again, here, same logic. Uh, we are going to remove the H. So that's going to leave me an N, which two H's. Once again, here, that is neutral. We remove the positive from the H plus. We become one more negative. So there it is. And lastly, here, we're going to remove an H. That leaves us one H, an S, an O, and a three. Once again, that is no charge, which means we do have to put that negative in there. So again, if you're not sure what you should do with the H+, plus, hopefully you know it's an H+, plus and you got to put it on or take it off. If you just sort of think about it backwards, uh, it's very times very helpful because sometimes they won't tell you straight up like, hey, this is an acid or this is a base. They'll just say, write the conjugate acid or write the conjugate base. All right, so let's take a look at this one here, our friend, a little bicarbonate action. So for bicarbonate, starting with bicarbonate in both situations, why don't you write the conjugate base for it? And why don't you also write the conjugate acid? All right, so once again, in both cases, we're gonna start with carbonate. What is the conjugate base? And what would be the conjugate acid? So take a moment and see what you come up with. Okay, uh, let's take a look. Uh, we'll start over here on the right. We're gonna want the conjugate acid. So if we follow our logic, I'm looking for the conjugate acid in this case, which means if I follow it backwards, that means what I am looking at in this case, is actually gonna be a base going to this direction. And a base definition is it's going to accept the H plus, which means I'm going to put the H plus on, which will give me two H's, a CO3. When I put on that H plus added, Plus one, minus one gives me no charge. When it's said and done, it will give me H2CO3. Now, conjugate base, same idea. If we didn't do the previous example, we would just think about it logically going backwards. Means that that's an acid. So much like we did in this problem, we're going to lose an H plus, right? So we'll take off the H, leaves us a CO3 and a minus. We also have a plus one that's lost, which means we become one more negative. We get a little carbonate action there. So very important to kind of think about it backwards as to what's going on. By the way, this is something that can act as an acid or a base. And a lot of things that have a hydrogen and a minus sign I typically have that ability to do that. That is what is known as something being amphoteric. So an amphoteric substance is a substance that can act as an acid or a base. Um, and water, as we saw as well in those couple of equations that I wrote previously, the one with the HCl or the one with the NH3 actually is an amphoteric substance as well. So amphoteric substance, something that can act as an acid or a base. And again, things with a negative charge that have the hydrogen to donate, uh, typically have the ability to do that. So let's talk a little bit about acid strength here. Uh, the forward reaction for an acid and base will make our H3O plus and our A minus. Uh, once again, uh, this is sort of a generic formula for an acid. These products can't come back the other way. And again, this is going to give us a weak acid situation uh, where we have basically a weak electrolyte that has happened. So if the forward direction predominates with a giant arrow there, we will have uh, what is known as a strong acid. And a strong acid is 100% completely dissociated or ionized and something like hydrochloric acid, once again, is an example of that. In solution, you have none of the HCl units still together. 
is all 100% these ions floating around. So what are some strong acids? There's a nice list of uh, some strong acids, which are good to know throughout your chemistry career. So here's a little list here of some of our strong acids. Uh, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid, perchloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydriotic acid. So these are some strong acids. Uh, and again, each of these things will 100% break apart. So why is it important maybe to know these sort of six or so strong acids? Because you, if you know these guys are strong acids and you come across another acid uh, that's not one of these guys, it's probably fairly safe to assume that it will actually be a weak acid. So that's one way at this point in your sort of chemistry education, uh, if you see it's not one of those guys, it's probably safe to assume that it's going to be a weak acid if it is an acid you're given in that case. Speaking of weak acids, if the reverse reaction happens, uh, then it will mainly stay together and that will usually result in those two-headed arrows happening like hydrofluoric acid, H plus and F minus. Again, in solution, you mainly have this guy still together. So if you were to look at a beaker, you would mainly have, you know, these guys floating around, but you will have a little bit of HF and a little bit of uh, F minus or H plus and F minus floating around. So weak acids and just a, a few common weak acids you come across a lot, uh, HF, as we just saw there, uh, nitrous acid, um, <clears throat> Acetic acid, which is sometimes written like this. Uh, sometimes it's written as C2H4O2. Uh, basically the same thing, acetic acid. Uh, there, there are a lot of others, uh, carbonic acid, um, HCN, uh, hydro, hydrocyanic acid. Uh, there's a lot of weak acids. So uh, I would say maybe more weak acids than strong acids. So once again, that's why this list is kind of a good one to reference sometimes. Uh, if you see it's not one of them, then probably a safe bet you have a weak acid sort of happening. So a strong acid and sort of the relationship between a strong acid and its conjugate base is this. If you have a strong acid, it will contain a relatively weak conjugate base. Um, and if you have a weak acid, it will contain a relatively strong conjugate base. So the relationship is if you have an acid and its conjugate base, if it is a strong acid, it will have a relatively weak conjugate base. But if it's a weak acid it comes from, it will be relatively strong. And the same thing happens when you compare a base and its conjugate acid. If you have a strong base, its conjugate acid will be relatively weak. And if you have a weak base, its conjugate acid will be relatively strong. So what do we talk about when we talk about a strong conjugate base or a strong conjugate acid? It is nowhere near as strong as a strong acid or strong base. What it means, and we really don't talk about it in this class, but again, in a couple classes down the road, you will talk about it. Um, and that is uh, in certain cases, those conjugate bases or conjugate acids are where sometimes referred to as salt, like we were talking about a little bit earlier on in the uh, lecture here. And sometimes what happens is those salts have the ability to continue to react and actually having a big effect on the pH of that solution. So when we say strong, that means it has the ability to go through what is sometimes referred to as a hydrolysis reaction, which means it will actually react with water. And water's in a solution to begin with, and it's able to continue to react with water and either make that a uh, solution more acidic or more basic. There's actually some salts that... Um, are weak and they will not do anything. They're kind of referred to as neutral salts. So a little outside the scope of our class, what happens with those uh, sort of conjugate acids or conjugate bases, which are really the salt in most cases, um, but uh, they can be relatively strong, which means they can continue to react with something like water and affect the pH of solution. As I mentioned before, there's some are strong acids and 
I did a little bit earlier there about our diprotic acid and our triprotic acid. Again, those hydrogens come off one at a time. Uh, speaking of strong bases, um, as I mentioned as well, a lot of strong bases will have hydroxide in the actual formula, uh, like sodium hydroxide, uh, potassium hydroxide. Uh, you know, if you go on the periodic table and essentially kind of like uh, come down group one, right around potassium and then hang out right there to kind of catch calcium and come down any of those guys in group one or two on the periodic table that has actually hydroxide in them uh, will tend to be strong bases uh, most weak bases a lot of times will you know be something like ammonia or even something that looks similar to ammonia has a nitrogen a couple of hydrogens or a lot of weak bases so uh most acids are oxy acids oxy acids mean that they contain oxygen uh so for example we drew uh this guy i think there in uh our lewis structure chapter there bonding and we'll have this bond here for example and it is this h that comes off and that's from a polar bond and this guy will be able to come off and produce h plus in solution uh, for example, acetic acid looks like this. What I'm drawing right now is acetic acid, which is the major component of vinegar. And once again, it is this guy here uh, that has the ability uh, to come off and make the H+. None of these guys will come off. Uh, it is this guy over here at that polar bond. This group right here that I just drew is what is known as the carboxylic acid group or carboxyl group. And that is the carbon oxygen double bond and the single bond. And most organic guys will have this. And again, it is that hydrogen that comes off uh, that makes it an acid. Obviously, uh, non-oxy acids, it's like something like HCl. It is this guy that basically comes off and reacts it. Here's a table for your book is some of your strong electrolytes. And again, you can see kind of group one and group two on the periodic table. Uh, and your hydroxide is your strong bases. Uh, this is a lot of our weak electrolytes here. So a lot of these guys are weak acids and there's our ammonia, which is a very common weak base. Now water can act as an acid or base, as I mentioned before, and it is a amphoteric substance. And in the first case, as we talked about here, it is the water sending the hydrogen over. So in that case, water is acting as an acid. In the second case, the water is actually going to receive the H plus and it will act as a base. And that again is an amphoteric substance. Water can even react with itself. One is an acid. We'll just call this one an acid. One's a base. Uh, so this guy will send over to another water, by the way. H plus, and that is always happening in solution. So in water solutions, you basically have some H3O plus there. You have some OH minus happening as water basically reacts with itself. That is what is sometimes referred to as the auto ionization of water. And uh, water is going to set up an equilibrium and equilibrium is usually happens with these two way arrows that say PowerPoint version of the two-way arrow, basically. And KW gets set up here. And KW is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. And that equals one times 10 to the minus 14. So this is one of many equations we're gonna see in this chapter, I don't know many, but uh, that again, as you can see here, you could rewrite this and swap out the H plus for the H3O plus. And again, it means the same thing. It's the acid part of the solution in this case will equal one times 10 to the minus 14. Um, when we do brackets like this, that means concentration. And in most cases, what that usually means is molarity, right? Which is our moles per liter. It's basically what we're talking about there. So, the relationship between the amount of H plus in solution and the amount of OH minus in solution is opposites of each other. So as one goes up, the other goes down. So as you have more H plus in the solution, 
you have less OH minus and vice versa. As the H plus would go down, the OH minus will go up. Depending on the concentration of H plus to OH minus, you could actually determine if the solution is acidic or basic. So once again, you could think of the H plus concentration as the acid part and the OH minus as the base part of that solution. So if we compare the H plus concentration to the OH minus concentration, we could determine whether or not that solution will be acidic, basic, or neutral. So acidic solutions will have a larger H plus than OH minus. So if the concentration of H plus is greater than the OH minus, uh, that's gonna be acidic. If the H plus concentration is less than the OH minus or the OH minus is greater, the base part is greater than the acid part, it will be a basic solution. And if they actually do equal each other, they would both have a concentration of one times 10 to minus seven, and that would make them neutral solution. If we take our KW that we saw on the previous page there, our H plus and our OH minus concentration, and again, that always equals this number unless the temperature changes, which that number would change, but 99.99% of the time, that is the number you're going to use. I mean, you rearrange it by just uh, dividing things to the other side. You get our two versions down here, and that will allow you to solve for the H plus concentration if you have the OH minus concentration and vice versa. versa. Throwing back to our calculator discussion, this is 100% the chapter that you need to make sure you are using your exponent button. I'm not quite sure I could write it any bigger than that. If you are not putting numbers in your calculator using your exponent button at this point, you need to do that for sure here. You're going to run into a lot of problems with your numbers. So we need to make sure again that you put it in using your exponent button. All right, speaking of your calculator, grab your calculator. You should hopefully have it out already. Uh, let's try all four of these. So these are four separate problems. We want to know either the OH minus or the H plus for this guy, this one, this one, and this one. So obviously on the first ones, we're looking for what is the OH minus. And for the last ones, we're looking what is the H plus concentration. And we're also looking for all of them. Is it acidic, basic, or neutral? All right. Use your exponent button. Use your KW. See what you come up with. All right. Uh, let's take a look. Um, got them here on some separate slides, so we'll go through these. So in this case, we're given the H plus concentration. And really, for all these problems, we're going to use that KW relationship of the H plus concentration times the OH minus concentration equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So here we have the H plus, we're going to send the O, uh, we're going to send the H plus to the other side. And that will give us that the OH minus concentration equals one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by the H plus, putting in our number one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 3.4 times 10 to the minus four. Just a throwback reminder that hopefully you know by now how we punch this in correctly. We're gonna go one, we're gonna go exponent button. We're going to go negative button. We're gonna go 14. We're then going to hit the divide button. We're gonna go 3.4 exponent button, negative button and four and hit equals. So again, you wanna make sure that you punch this in correctly one exponent button, negative 14, uh, divided by 3.4 exponent button, negative four, going to get us a 2.9 times 10 to the minus 11. And we do want to put the molarity there because it is a concentration. All right. So again, make sure that you do that. The next part of the question is, is it acidic? Is it basic? Is it neutral? We want to compare basically our two concentrations. And our two concentrations is, we have the H plus concentration, which is the acid part, is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 4. 
we have the OH minus, which is the base part of the solution. So remember that this is really our acid part. This is our base part, right? Because that's what hydroxide equals. And upon comparing them, I know you did this correctly. It is acidic. So just in case you did not do that correctly, let's talk about what you might have done. Uh, when you look at the exponent part, times 10 to the minus 4 for our H plus, times 10 to the minus 11 for our OH minus. When you look at these exponents to compare them, the smaller the negative exponent, the larger the number is. Why is that? Well, minus 4 means I'm only going four places this way. Minus 11 means I'm going, I'm not going to draw them, 11 places this way, and I'm putting zeros, and that's a lot of zeros. So when you are comparing these concentrations, which is a common mistake that people make, the negative exponent is really important because, again, the smaller the negative exponent, the larger the actual number is. All right, let's take a look at some more here. Once again, we have the H plus concentration. So our OH minus concentration equals 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 2.6 times 10 to the minus 8. We're going to take, uh, again, punching in correctly, one exponent button, negative 14, divided by 2.6, exponent button, negative 8. Remember as well that if you have one of those calculators with that third type of button that we talked about, you need to also make sure you're putting parentheses around your numbers. So 3.8 times 10 to the minus 7. Once again, we do need molar here. By the way, if you do not have your uh, calculator and scientific notation, you may have got more of a decimal number, like, you know, 0.00000, 000, 000, one more zero, maybe, uh, 3846 or something like that. So again, uh, you can put it into scientific notation. Once again, comparing this acidic, basic, neutral, uh, we got to the minus seven and the minus eight. That is the smaller, which means it's larger number here. And that means that's the OH minus, which it means this one should be basic in this case. Continuing on here to the next one, we have OH minus in this case. Good news with KW, it really is the same calculation regardless. So we'll take H plus is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 6.2 times 10 to the minus 9. Once again, punching it in properly with our exponent button. 1 exponent button, negative 14 divided by 6.2 exponent button, negative 9. No extra multiplication buttons or inverse log buttons gives us a 1.6 times 10 to the minus six. Remember, don't forget that part of the number from your calculator either. Also needs a molarity as it is a concentration. Once again, upon comparison, that's minus six to minus nine. That means that ABC, no, there we go. Uh, acid basic are neutral. The H plus is actually larger in this case. And that would mean that it's acidic. And lastly, on this problem here, we have our OH minus. So going with our H plus concentration, equaling one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by our OH minus 8.1 times 10 to the minus three. Might get broken record at this point. Make sure to use your exponent button. One exponent button, negative 14 divided by 8.1 exponent button negative three going to get us a 1.2 times 10 to the minus uh, 12 looks like and once again we do need molarity there it will be the same concentration unit as this guy comparing our h plus which is our acid part is to the minus 12 our oh minus here which is the base part of the solution is only the minus three. That means this one is going to be basic. So most people really run into some trouble with punching it into the calculator. So make sure again, you use that exponent button correctly. All right, let's take a look at this one. Which one's greater? Forget the greater part of it. Let's just do this part of it. Uh, what is the OH minus? 
and is it acidic basic or neutral so take a moment and see what you come up with all righty so uh in this case uh we have the ace plus so like i said before good news on kw by the way you always have that number the one times 10 to minus 14 and it doesn't matter which one they give you it is always the same calculation so that one times 10 to minus 14 which is the value of kw should always go up on top and really whatever concentration they gave you either the h plus or the oh minus should go on the bottom so we're going to go with uh, one exponent negative 14 divided by 2.8 exponent button negative 5. also remember to use your negative button not your subtract button right 3.6 times 10 to the minus 10. sorry i can't help myself so i want to make sure you punch it in correctly we're going to put the molarity there and now we can do our comparison. So our H plus, which is our acid part versus our base part over here. And that is minus five, which is a larger number than our base part. Uh, so that's gonna be acidic in this case. All right, I think we're gonna skip that one. Let's talk about the next really important thing about sort of acid bases and, you know, uh, those type of solutions and that's the ph scale and the ph scale really does run from and we've got a nicer picture here so we'll come back to the next one uh it runs from zero to seven uh to 14 and from seven to zero are below seven to zero so below seven to zero uh it's acidic above seven to 14 it is basic and really at seven it is neutral the reason it is neutral is because at that point the h plus concentration will equal the oh minus concentration and it will actually give you a ph of seven when that happens uh, so that's why seven on the nose is technically neutral now some people have a little bit of wiggle room above and below seven in terms of they still consider it neutral so so there's no misunderstanding for us in this class in terms of the lecture part uh we're gonna go with just straight it's seven has to be neutral exactly seven are pretty darn close like you know 6.99 or something like that or 7.01 it's you know neutral if it's anything sort of above like really really super close uh it's going to be basic and with anything below it's going to be slightly acidic so anything a little bit above seven slightly basic anything a little below seven slightly acidic and we will go so there's no misunderstanding it's got to be exactly seven uh, to be considered neutral for our purposes again some people will have a little bit of wiggle room up and down and still consider it neutral um, not too far off correct there but we'll go by the true definition of when it is neutral which is this which should lead you to an exact ph of seven um and again as you go from seven closer to zero you're becoming as you can see here more acidic and as you go from uh, seven closer to 14 you're becoming more basic in this case here's our h plus concentration and again uh the larger the h plus concentration the more acidic it is. What that means, if you look at your beaker, it is filled with a lot of H pluses, yes? As you go over here, we have a much smaller H plus concentration. Remember that the relationship between H plus and OH minus means that you actually would have a larger OH minus concentration at that point. And that means if you looked in your beaker, you would have actually more OH minus floating around then you would H plus. So again, remember that opposite relationship as the H plus goes up, the OH minus goes down and vice versa. So one way that we look at the acidity of a solution is to actually calculate the pH. And you don't have to worry about any of that if that's too mathy for you, which it might be. But we can calculate the pH by taking the pH is equal to minus the log of the H plus concentration. So once again, this is another equation where we could substitute in there 
the pH is equal to minus the log of the H3O plus concentration. So once again, same deal. Well, speaking of calculators, let's talk about calculators here and how to properly punch this into your calculator. It all depends whether or not you have a display calculator or not. So how do you know you have a display calculator or not? Let's do a test right now. Take your calculator, find your log button, which some of you might have been using for exponents and you should not. And this is the reason why you should not use it because we need to actually use it here correctly. Push the log button. And if you see on your screen, it says log, congratulations, you have a display calculator. If you push the log button and you see on your screen error, congratulations, you have a non-display calculator. It's got non-display. So that's the quick way you can test whether or not you have a display calculator or a non-display calculator. Once again, if you hit the log button, it says log, display calculator. If you hit the log button, it says error, it gives you like an error message. You have a non-display calculator. So why is that important? It's important to how you punch this equation in and almost all the rest of them we're gonna talk about in this chapter. So let's talk about the difference. Well, you take the pH is equal to negative the log of the H plus. If you have a display calculator, you punch it in exactly the way the formula is written, which means you find not your subtract button, but your negative button. You then hit your log button. You then put your number in, probably with your exponent button. Yeah. Now, and you hit equals at some point in most cases, you probably hit equals perhaps. Now, if you have a non-display calculator, this formula and all the rest of them, you got to work backwards. So you got to work in this direction. So that's like non-display going this way. And display calculator, basically going this way in terms of the formula. You actually will start with the number, your concentration. So you'll start with the number. Also make sure you use the exponent button. You then will hit the log button. And then you will hit your negative button to make it positive. So display exactly the way it's written is how you punch it into your calculator. Non-display, you got to go backwards in this one in all formulas. So hopefully that makes sense and you'll get the hang of it here as we go through it. But let's talk about everybody's favorite thing, which is significant figures and the deal with significant figures and pH. The number of decimal places in your answer when you calculate a number like pH should be equal to the number of significant figures in the original solutions concentration. So we're going from significant figures in the concentration to decimal places in the, like the pH value. And by the way, if you go backwards, if you have the pH and need the concentration, you would go from decimal places back to significant figures. So good place to try our calculator in this. Figure out the pH of this to the proper number of digits. So take a moment, punch it in either with your display calculator or your non-display calculators. So give it a few moments and give it a try. All right, let's do it. So we are working with the pH is equal to negative log of the H plus. That means our pH will equal negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the minus five. Once again, depending on your calculator, display calculator, you punch it in this way. Non-display calculator, you go this way. So if you have a display calculator, once again, you would go negative button, log button, one exponent button, negative button, and five equals. You have a non-display calculator. You would punch in one exponent button, negative button, five, then hit the log button, then hit the negative button. Don't think you need to hit equals. You should probably be fine at that point. 
All right, so hopefully one of those two ways you are staring at a display screen that says five. Hopefully that's what it says. So how should we record this? Should it be five? Should the pH be 5.0? Should the pH be 5.00? One of those is the right answer. Two of them are wrong, I think. All right, so let's see what the rules say. The rules say when you look at the concentration value, you want to figure out how many significant figures there are. This is written in scientific notation, which means that looks like two significant figures. Now, the number of significant figures in your concentration is not how many significant figures your answer should have. It is how many decimal places your answer should have. So shouldn't it be that guy? Shouldn't it be that guy? Two significant figures means two decimal places. Once again, not significant figures. So significant figures, two decimals, the correct way to report that would be 5.00. Final question on this slide, acid, acidic, basic or neutral, that is less than seven. So that would be acidic. So again, hopefully you're getting the hang of this. Let's take a look at some examples here. We want to actually calculate the pH of each of these. We also want to know, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? And again, these are two separate problems. So figure out the pH of each of these and see what you come up with. All right, let's take a look. I uh, got them on the next slide here. So we'll take a look at each of these here and see how we do. All right, so the first one here, we want uh, to calculate the pH. So pH is equal to minus the log of the H plus concentration. Uh, we are given the H plus concentration, so we're good. Minus the log of 2.1 times 10 to the minus five. Once again here, we wanna make sure we put it into our calculator correctly. Display calculator, you should be hitting your negative button. You should be hitting your log button and you should be going 2.1 exponent button, negative five. Those with a non-display calculator should be putting in 2.1 exponent, negative button, five, hit the log and then hit the negative button one more time. And at this point, what you should see staring at you hopefully is a number of 10.5. Seven, seven in this case. Once again, two significant figures means two decimal places in this case. Again, not significant figures for our pH type value. That is above seven. I feel that feels basic in that case. All right, let's take a look at the next one. We have the OH minus concentration, 5.9 times 10 to the minus eight. PH is equal to minus the log of the H plus concentration. Wait a second. It actually tells me what I need to calculate. PH means you need the H plus concentration. That is not the H plus concentration. That is your OH minus concentration. So we got to do a throwback here, a little KW action to get to the OH minus concentration. So we're going to use our KW and actually solve for the H plus concentration, which is one times 10 to the minus 14 divided by our OH minus of 5.9 times 10 to the minus eight. Taking that there, one to the minus uh, 14 divided by 5.9 to the minus eight. Gonna give us, uh, that's a lot of zeros there to count. So that's gonna give us, uh, we'll call it uh, one point six nine times ten to the minus seven molar now we have the h plus we could go into a little minus the log of that number there and uh that's going to give us a negative log of uh make even round if you want 1.7 times 10 to the minus seven and that's going to get us there basically 6.77 as your pH, two significant figures, two decimal places. Now, 
if you did this, maybe you did, maybe you're looking at your paper and you didn't quite have that. You didn't quite see that. And you did this. And you just put this number in 5.9 times 10 to the minus eight. And you got this number here, perhaps uh, we got there. That's something like uh, 7.23. You did not obviously calculate the pH because that's the pH. And you didn't calculate the pH because you had the OH minus concentration. Good news is you did calculate something. And the other good news is perhaps you're just only like a couple slides early. You calculate not the pH, but what is known as the pOH which as you can imagine uses the OH minus concentration. So you might be saying, I still got the wrong answer. And that answer is true. You got the wrong answer for pH, but you did get the right answer for pOH. And sometimes that's not a bad thing because there is a really nice relationship. For example, if you take the pH uh, plus the pOH, it will equal 14, which means that if you did what you did there, it got to 7.23. If you take 14 minus the pOH, that will give you the pH. And we take 14 minus 7.23. Dare I say that is going to be 6.77, uh, which is the pH in this case. So you actually could get yourself to the pH by using this relationship. Uh, so not all is lost. You actually calculate something, but not what you were supposed to calculate here. All right. So 6.77 would be considered acidic, slightly acidic here. Again, that's one of those ones a little too far to round to seven. So we're going to consider that slightly acidic as it's less than seven. All right. So let's talk about some of these other things here in relationships. Um, the pH scales based on the log uh, scale of 10 or the base of 10. That means for every pH that changes, the concentration of H plus changes by a power of 10. So if you have a pH of three, you will have an H plus concentration of one times 10 to minus three. pH of four, you will have an H plus concentration of one times 10 to minus four. pH of five, one times 10 to minus five. As the amount of H plus that's free in that solution increases, you will see a decrease in the pH. And again, that relationship of H plus and OH minus, one goes up, one goes down, right? And vice versa, obviously. So the lower the pH, more H plus, the more acidic it is. Now, how do we measure pH? There's a couple of different ways that we use to measure pH. Uh, most commonly, we'll use a pH meter, which looks like this, gives you a digital display. It has a probe here that measures the free H plus concentration in the solution. Uh, what does it really do or how does it really work? Well, truthfully, uh, it measures voltage. And what you do is you calibrate the pH meter by putting a solution that you say is a pH of seven, a pH of four and a pH of 10. And it measures the voltages of those things a lot of times. And it'll make like a little calibration curve and go, okay. So when you put your solution in, it goes, oh, it's got kind of like that voltage. That will be then a pH of 2.360, for example. Uh, so that's really how it works. It measures technically the free amount of H plus in there. Uh, most, a lot of times that's sort of how it does work. This right here is a pH paper. And if you have a pool or, or maybe uh, you've seen somebody kind of take care of a pool or something like that, a lot of times they'll sell those little strips. So you kind of put it in the water and it measures everything. And that's sort of what pH paper does. You kind of put it in the solution. It has like a little key here that you try to match up to the best and go, oh, I think it like, maybe it looks like that combination and it'll give you a pH. Uh, not super accurate, but it'll give you an idea of like I mentioned before, uh, sort of give you an idea of what the pH is, but might not be as accurate as using something like a pH meter. We talked about earlier litmus paper. Litmus paper, again, does not, uh, when you use litmus paper, it does not give you a pH, 
but it will tell you if it's acidic or basic in most cases. And once again, if litmus paper turns red, it's acidic. If it turns blue, it's basic. So um, again, does not tell you the pH, but does give you an idea of if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. In some cases, pH paper will do that. So we sort of jumped gun there by talking about this here a second ago, but there is another scale and it measures the amount of hydroxide that's in the solution. And it has that POH is equal to minus the log of the OH minus. Once again, it tells you right there, POH need the OH minus. Just like pH basically tells you you need the H plus concentration minus the log of the H plus concentration. Once again, that relationship between those two, which is a healthful one, uh, means you don't might not have to use KW that we talked about. As I did there in that one example a second ago, I actually didn't even use KW. I calculated the POH first, and then I could subtract 14 to get to the, the uh, pH. So uh, you could still use KW like we did in that problem, or you could use this relationship. It gives you a few options as to how to do it. While we're at it, let's add two more important formulas or equations to our list. And that is if you have the pH given to you, you could get from it directly the H plus concentration. And to do that, you would take the inverse log of the negative pH. Most people, when they hit the inverse log on their calculator, uh, will pop up a 10 and a carrot, and then you go negative pH. That's most often what it will kind of look like. Once again, also a very common button that people use incorrectly for exponents. So um, you might actually know where this button is located. Also, if you have the POH, you could get the OH minus concentration from it. And once again, it's actually the same calculation as the inverse log of the negative POH. And once again, we'll usually pop up like 10 and a carat minus POH or negative POH here. Where is that on your calculator? Well, I would say most people's calculators if you find your log button, you'll have a 10 to the carat uh, or maybe like a 10 to the X sort of above it. And usually most people will have to use the second button, which is upper left or the shift button that might be there instead. So usually that's hit the shift and or the second and the log. Just like all these formulas on this screen, depending on whether you have a display calculator or non-display calculator as to how you need to punch it in. So let's take these two formulas here. If you have a display calculator, you again punch it in exactly the way it's written. You would hit probably your second or shift button. You would hit your log button. It'll pop up a 10 and a carat. You would hit your negative button and punch in your pH. If you have a non-display calculator, once again, you actually need to start with the number. So you need to work your way backwards this way. So you would actually start with the pH or POH. You then would hit your second or sh shift button. You then would hit your log button. Uh, also, by the way, you would have, uh, I'm sorry, well, you, probably in most cases, let me just rephrase how you would do that one. Uh, you would need to turn it into a negative, which means on most calculators, uh, you probably would then need to hit your negative button after you put the pH in. Then you would hit your second button or shift button, and then you would hit your log button. So those are, again, the two probably ways that you would punch it into your calculator. All right, let's take a look at some so we could try some of these buttons and see how we do. And once again, these are two separate problems. Why don't we calculate everything to make sure everything works? So for the first guy, let's calculate the pH. Let's do the pOH. Let's do the OH minus concentration. And is it acidic, basic, or neutral? For the second guy, let's calculate the pH, the pOH, the H plus concentration. And is it acidic, basic, or neutral? All right. Get your calculator. Make sure you know how to prompt these in because you will need to know how to do it. Yeah. So take a few moments and see what you come up with. All right, uh, let's take a look here. So I think I'm on some different slides. So we'll start with this one. We're going to calculate everything. Uh, pH, uh, pOH, OH minus concentration. And is it acidic, basic, or neutral? 
All right, so since I am given the H plus concentration, I have two options at this point. I could go directly into the pH equation. I could also use KW to figure out the OH minus concentration. So neither one is wrong in terms of which way you want to go. I am in this case, though, going to roll with the pH first. So I'm going to go pH is equal to minus the log or negative log of 3.6 times 10 to the minus 9. I'm going to punch that into my calculator correctly, which hopefully we know how to do at this point. Negative log 3.6 exponent, but to negative 9. Going to give me a pH in this case of not that. That feels like 19. So it's a little too big. Try that again. Negative log. I used to hit that button twice, I suppose. Uh, 3.6 exponent by negative 9. That feels a little better over there. Uh, 8.44. Uh, again, two decimal places, two significant figures. Now that I have that, I can use the relationship that the pH plus the pOH is equal to 14. And I could put in there that the pOH would equal 14 minus the pH. So put it in our numbers, 14 minus 8.44. Going to go uh, 14 minus 8.44, 5.56. Now I have my POH, and I'm going to do the other calculation there. I'm going to take my POH, and I'm going to get my OH minus concentration by taking the inverse log of the negative POH. So once again, on my calculator, I'm gonna punch in, if I have a display calculator, the second button, the log button, and probably right about there, you got like a 10 and a carrot probably popped up on your screen. I am going to hit the negative button and 5.56, that will probably look something like that on your screen. And if you do all that good stuff there, you will end up uh, with here a OH minus concentration of 2.8 times 10 to the minus 6. This does need molarity as the unit. And uh, by the way, pH and pOH do not have units associated with them. So... You don't have to calculate any units, it's just a number, uh, and so no units associated with that. Who should I look at when I am answering this question here, acidic, basic, or neutral? You should always look at the pH value. So in this case, my pH value is 8.44. And that means that this is above seven and it is basic. By the way, when you're asked that question, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? There's only one answer to that question. It is not acidic, basic. I've never had anybody do all three, but sometimes people will do acidic and then also basic. It cannot be both. It's gotta be one and not the other. Why do people do that? Well, just like in this example, people will look at the pH and go, Oh, cool, above seven is basic. And then they'll come down here and look at the pOH and go, oh, below seven is acidic. Wrong, yes? You'll get a lot of excess. So you do not want to do that. You should always look at the pH scale. Why do I say you should always look at the pH scale? Well, frankly, they run opposites of each other. So on the pH scale, it is zero to seven to 14. Once again, this is acidic. Above seven is basic, and this is neutral. On the pOH scale, it also runs from zero to seven to 14, but it is opposite, which means below seven is basic. Above seven is acidic, and seven is neutral. So if you have a low pH, you will have a high pOH and vice versa. Most people in their head, when they think of this scale, uh, this is the scale they're thinking of. It is the pH scale. So you should always look at the pH scale and nothing else to determine if it's acidic, basic, or neutral. And that's really the reason why there. All right. Now, as I mentioned before, if you took a different route, uh, you could have 
got the OH minus concentration right off the bat by taking one times 10 to the minus 14, uh, divided by 3.6 times 10 to the minus nine, uh, with some rounding maybe, but you should definitely get, you know, kind of what we got down here. At that point, you could have the P, you have the OH minus and the H plus. You could go into the pH equation or the POH equation, and you know, you could get the answers that way as well. So there are a couple different ways, depending on the route you take as to how you can solve it. All right, looking at the next one, I got the OH minus. So I'm looking for the H plus. I'm looking for the pH, POH, and once again, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? So here again, I'm going to actually start with the POH. You could again use the OH minus const or KW to figure out the H plus concentration. But since I have this going right into the POH minus the log of 9.2 times 10 to the minus 2, that's going to give me a negative log 9.2 to the minus 2. And that's going to give me a 1.04 as my poh two significant figures two decimal places i am now going to find the ph simply by just subtracting seems a lot easier so ph plus the poh equals 14 that means that the ph will equal 14 minus my poh which i just calculated gives me 14 minus 1.04 where my ph will then give me 12 point, whoops, uh, there we go. 12.96 looks like a pH there. And at this point, uh, I'm going to do the same calculation to get the H plus. So the pH will then give me the H plus concentration inverse log of the negative pH. Once again, when you properly punch that into your calculator, it probably look like a 10 with a carrot. Make it negative 12.96. Gonna get us here. If I find that button, there it is. Call it 1.8 times 10 to the minus 13. We do need to units of molarity there. By the way, coming backwards, uh, that is two decimal places, which means two significant figures is what I should have here coming backwards. Lastly here, we're going to once again look at our pH. And as you correctly are yelling at the screen, the pH here is 12.96. That is definitely above seven. Uh, so that would be basic. Most people struggle greatly in this chapter with, once again, punching it into your calculator correctly. So make sure that you understand what you need to calculate and make sure that you understand how to punch it into your calculator. Extremely important. All right, let's take a look at a few more examples here. If the pH of the solution is uh, 5.67, what's the POH? What's also the pH? Why we're at it, what's the H plus? What's the OH minus concentration? And for good measure, is it acidic, basic, or neutral? So take a few moments and see what you come up with on this one. Okay, let's take a look. I got the pH given to me. So really right off the bat, I could go into this relationship here. pH plus POH equals 14. And we're going to solve for the POH, uh, which will be 14 minus the pH. So popping that in there, 14 minus 5.67. Going to give me a POH here of uh, 8.33. Now that I have both of those numbers, I'm going to use the inverse log of the negative pH to equal my H plus concentration. Once again, on your calculator, if you have a display calculator, you're going to go uh, your second button or shift You're going to go your log button. You're going to go your negative button and you can go 5.67. Again, if you have a non-display calculator, 5.67 negative button second button and log one of those two ways should put you up a carrot and it'll look something like this probably on your display hopefully and it will get us here negative 5.67 looks like uh 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6 molar and once again that would be our h plus concentration 
We're gonna do the same thing with our POH. So our OH minus concentration equals the inverse log of the negative POH. So put it in there. It's gonna look like this once you punch it in correctly, hopefully. And that's gonna give us, we'll call it 4.7 times 10 to the minus nine. Once again, you do need those units of molarity here. At this point, I think we calculated everything except is it acidic, basic, or neutral? Once again, gonna look at the pH. pH is 5.67, that's less than seven, and that means it should be acidic. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this and how to punch it into your calculator. Let's take a look at uh, another one here. The pH of the solution is 3.14, what is the H plus? And we'll just calculate just what it asks. So. What is the H plus of this solution? So take a moment and see what you come up with. Okay, uh, so in this case, we have only the pH. Uh, so that's gonna limit us on our approach. We have to use sort of this formula here that the H plus is equal to the inverse log of the negative pH. Once again, uh, if we put that in properly into your calculator, it should look something like this. And again, uh, if you have a display calculator, you're gonna do second log, because it should have that sort of above it probably. Uh, again, here, negative and uh, 3.14. Again, non-display calculator is gonna start with the number always. So 3.14, gonna make it negative gonna second log it or shift log it. And regardless of which way you do it, you should end up with, as long as you do it correctly, I suppose, uh, 7.2 times 10 to the minus four molar. Once again, here we end with two significant figures because it had two decimal places. So that's the importance of that. All right, let's take a look at another one here. POH is 5.67, what is the OH minus? So again, uh, why don't you calculate that, see what you come up with. Okay, uh, let's take a look. Uh, so in this case, kind of similar, we are only given the POH, so that really does limit our approach. We have to use this approach that the OH minus is equal, once again, to the inverse log of the negative POH. Once again, just like the last one, it should end up looking something like this on your display in most cases. Uh, and again, with your display calculator, that's going to be a second or shift. Uh, that's going to be a log, which should be that on top of it. Uh, that's going to be a negative and a 5.67. And again, on your non-display, we're going with the number first. So 5.67, make it negative. Take the second and take the log here. And if we punch all that in, uh, where's my button? There it is. Uh, there, inverse log negative. Again, not the subtract button, so the negative button. Make sure you use that. And that's going to give us uh, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 6 molar. Once again, significant figure wise, two decimals, two significant figures. All right, so a lot going on there with pH, a few formulas, trickiness, hopefully not too tricky in terms of how you punch it into your calculator. Can't emphasize it enough, practice that, practice that. Make sure that you know how to punch it in correctly. I think this is a good stopping place. We're almost done here with the final chapter of the season. Uh, we got just a few more topics, so I think this might be a good breaking spot, our stopping spot. So I guess there will be a part two. We'll see you on part two. Thank you for watching part one and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, hello there. And I hope you've enjoyed this lecture on asses and bases. I want to leave you with maybe an appropriate joke on the topic we've been talking about here. Why is the chemistry professor so good with acids and bases? Let me think. You think too. Ah, yes, it is because he has a PhD.